2020 has been a goddamn mess, and I don't just mean the things you think I mean. I'm talking about this from a couple of weeks ago. Wait a minute. I'm starting to think that Rage Against the Machine might be a, a leftist social commie band. If only they had left clues. But beyond that, I'd like to predict the next big outrage that's going to take place. Wait a minute. I think some of these heavy metal bands might be a little gay. If only they had left some clues. This year we've been celebrating 50 years of heavy metal, but when it comes to LGBT representation in music, that history goes back more like a hundred years. Of course, being gay in the 1920s wasn't just rare, it was legitimately dangerous. But gay culture began to blossom in the Roaring Twenties, especially throughout New York City's club scene in Harlem, Greenwich Village, and Times Square. And as the LGBT community began to freely express themselves in certain spaces, artists began to hint at their sexuality through music. Blues singer Ma Rainey is credited as a revolutionary figure for her lyrics on sexuality, first addressing the issue on her 1928 cut, Prove It On Me Blues. I went out last night with a crowd of my friends. It must have been women, cause I don't like no men. Wear my clothes just like a fan, talk to the gals just like any old man. And Ma Rainey is believed to have had a relationship with the iconic blues singer, Bessie Smith, who's often credited as a forebearer for what would become rock and roll. Dubbed the queer empress of the blues, Bessie Smith was mentored by Ma Rainey, and she became the most successful blues artist of her time, and she partied hard on the road. In 1930, she sang about her bisexuality in the song, The Boy on the Boat. When you see two women walking hand in hand, just look them over and try to understand. They'll go to those parties, have the lights down low, only those parties where women can go. Jumping forward to the 1950s, Billy Wright was one of the first openly gay musicians of his era, and he's credited with helping Little Richard develop his flamboyant look. So, rock and roll wasn't just created from one gay man and Little Richard, it was created by two gay black men from the South. And check out the original lyrics to Little Richard's rock and roll opus, Tutti Fruity. It actually reads, Tutti Fruity, good booty, if it don't fit, don't force it. You can grease it, make it easy. Damn. <laughs> But those words were later rewritten by an outside lyricist, leaving Little Richard's sexuality on the cutting room floor. Little Richard left a complicated legacy when it comes to sexuality, but still, he came out in 1995, long before LGBT folks were really accepted by mainstream America. I've been gay all my life, and I know God is a God of love, not hate. Little Richard told Penthouse Magazine. Little Richard also spoke about the fluidity of his sexuality while talking to GQ in 2012. We are all both male and female. Sex to me is like a smorgasbord. Whatever I feel like, I go for. But Little Richard did start to reject his own identity during the end of his life. So it's just, it's just like everybody's turning one way or the other. This man here, uh, 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 when I first came in show business, they, they, uh, they, they, they wanted you to look like everybody but yourself, <laughs> you know? And, and, and anybody that comes and show me, they're going to say you're gay, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, are you straight, yeah. are you uh, 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 homosexual or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to say it. But it, it, that God, Jesus made men, men. He made women, women. That's okay. Right. All right. That's right. You know? Okay. And you got to live the way God wants you to live. A real man won't wear no dress. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He won't feel right with that type of town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not yeah. a real man. Now, the first openly gay rock musician was Bruce Wayne Campbell, otherwise known as Jabriath. Jerry Brandt, legendary manager of Carly Simon, took Jabriath under his wing, saying publicly, Jabriath is going to be the biggest artist in the world. He's a singer, dancer, woman, man. He has the glamour of Garbo. He is beautiful. He said that to Melody Maker before telling Music Week, it's Sinatra, Elvis, The Beatles, and now Jabriath. A lot of money was initially put into Jabriath, 
And they even planned to build him a replica of the Empire State Building that transformed into a giant squirting penis to use during live shows, while a figure dressed as King Kong sashayed across the stage, getting soaked in the process. That's just good entertainment. And Jabriath was basically supposed to be David Bowie meets Guar. But the public just wasn't ready for him, and his career fizzled. Sadly, the first openly gay rock star signed to a major label also became one of the first prominent musicians to pass away from AIDS. Elton John initially came out as bisexual during an interview with Rolling Stone in 1976. There's nothing wrong with going to bed with somebody of your own sex. I think everybody's bisexual to a certain degree. I don't think it's just me. I think it's not a bad thing to be. I think you're bisexual. I think everybody is. But for more than 25 years, Sir Elton has happily been with now husband David Furnish, and Elton remains a superstar, an LGBT icon to this day. As for punk rock, gay culture actually began integrating itself into the genre pretty quickly, most notably down in Texas. Randy Biscuit Turner of the Big Boys is known as a major pioneer for LGBT representation in punk, as was Gary Floyd from fellow Texas punks, The Dicks. But punk wasn't always so welcoming to gay folks. With bands like The Bad Brains writing the homophobic Don't Blow Bubbles and openly preaching anti-gay sentiments in the past, but that's exactly where it remains in the past. They don't understand that we've grown, basis for The Bad Brains Daryl Jennifer said, just like anyone, I'm not ashamed to say, Maybe I could have been, damn right I was a homophobe. I shouldn't have to explain that to the world because everyone will do that. That's wisdom. You have to grow to be wise. And in my opinion, in 2020, we're much better off celebrating Bad Brains' change of heart instead of just condemning them for their past views. If only because forgiveness is essential for healing. Pete Shelley from the Buzzcocks was also an openly bisexual man in the early punk scene writing the pansexual anthem, Ever Fallen In Love With Someone You Shouldn't Have. I tried to be as gender neutral as possible in writing songs, because for me, I could use the same song for either sex. He told Manchester DJ Dave Haslam, Queen's Freddie Mercury never really came out as gay publicly during his lifetime, but I'd say it's safe to say that he left a few hints along the way. He's now celebrated as the quintessential LGBT icon in rock music, along with being the greatest frontman of all time. But a man who did come out relatively early was Faith No More keyboardist Roddy Bottom. He spoke in depth about his sexuality with The Advocate following a previous interview where he came out while talking to NME. He was asked, why didn't you bring up your homosexuality before? Bottom replied, I never thought it was that important. Since I went public, I tend to see the prejudice that's being leveled against homosexuals. Before I tended to think of it as a gossipy sort of thing, now I think of being openly gay as a political statement, something that in a small way furthers the gay rights movement. Kids who are into hard rock and who may be dealing with the possibility of being gay themselves don't see a lot of positive role models. Shortly after this, Faith No More did an interview where the whole band was in bed together. And I don't know if this was done as a statement, but it was at least in the spirit of solidarity with their keyboardist. So well done, guys. And like many LGBT artists before them, Faith No More left a pretty long trail of gay breadcrumbs in their music. Just check out the lyrics to be aggressive. What someone else would leave behind and spit out, let go to waste, I claim is mine. You're my flavor of the week. That's even more blatant than Judas Priest. And after 20 years of hinting at his sexuality, Rob Halford finally came out publicly in 1998. And speaking of gay breadcrumbs, here's an interesting theory that breaking the law is about man-on-man -man action. See, ramming it down was made illegal by England and Wales way back in 1533 via the Buggery Act under the reign of great ethical leader and dating coach, wait for it, King Henry VIII. Ultimately, sexual acts between two males were made legal in England and Wales in 1967, but it remained illegal in Scotland while Judas Priest were writing and recording British Steel, and remained illegal in Northern Ireland until 1982. When it comes to the United States, however, delivering the goods wasn't legal until 2003, when same-sex consensual intercourse was finally made legal 
on the federal level. And there are plenty more LGBT icons in rock and metal, like Doug Pinnock of King's X, Otep, Gall, Paul Masvidal and Sean Reinhardt of Cynic, Life of Agony's Mina Caputo, Against Me's Laura Jane Grace, and the most important punk band of the century, Gloss. Come back, girls. Your work's not done yet. And we should shout out Danica Rome, former vocalist for metal band Cab Ride Home, and now the first openly trans person to serve in the United States legislature as a member of the Virginia House of Delegates. Now I've talked an awful lot about the history of equality in this video and I do have to say that I don't understand the hatred towards people who are just trying to live their lives as their true authentic selves. Rock and metal is all about celebrating and embracing the outsiders and crushing societal norms. It's about free speech and freedom of expression outside of a fairly limited mainstream narrative and I personally can't understand how people who went to high school getting bullied for wearing their black band tees and having long hair could come around and bully other people for the way they dress and for the way they have their hair and for the way they choose to express themselves. And believe me, trolls, you were wrong in the past about women's rights, about civil rights, about gay rights, and you're absolutely going to be wrong about trans rights. All right, I've said my piece, and as much as I feel like it's my duty to speak out for LGBTQA plus folks, it's definitely not my job to speak for them. So here's a few artists speaking about their experiences in their own words. I'm very happy with my relationship at the moment, mm. and I couldn't, I really, honestly, wouldn't want, I couldn't ask for better. So I finally found a niche that I was looking for all my life. It, it, it's like I'm not, I don't have to try so hard. I don't have to prove myself hard. I've, I've got a very understanding relationship. If you have a problem with um, with gay and lesbian people, then maybe you have a prob problem on a racist level, maybe you have a problem on a, on a religious level. I think that um, every individual should seek out their own humanitarian qualities and just be who they want to be and leave, leave it alone. We've definitely seen over the years um, more and more people who have, uh, gay people especially, coming out to our shows and being open about it. Um, where, as before, they, would, they, would, they were afraid to, to be open at an aggressive political rock show. Um, they didn't know what would happen to them. And um, now we're having people that will come to us and they'll say like, hey, this is my husband, or hey, this is my wife, and you know, you, you, you'll see them in the audience. And, and what's great about our audience is that they're so accepting and inclusive, you know, they're exclusively inclusive. Do you think people will uh, see you differently and your music now because that this has been... Uh, mankind is known to be narrow-minded, so, yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe some, but uh, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, but I, I guess it will even out uh, the score in a way. So. I got really, really f***ed up on drugs and struggled really hard with that. At the same time, I was really, really struggling with dysphoria. And it was always that cycle. It was that cycle of intense feelings of dysphoria coupled with intense feelings of guilt and shame and then suppressing it and like trying to focus on something else, but it always coming back. Representation means safety to me. It means being able to exist in the world and not being in fear. And whenever I see a trans artist out there kicking ass, all I can think is, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. 